Good afternoon, Shabbat Shalom. I hope everyone is having a great day today. I hope the Most High have really truly blessed you over and abundantly with love, kindness, and joy. I hope the Most High have really truly blessed you and your offsprings with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. I hope He has blessed you with protection and healing, but I also ask that He have taken the fish scales off our eyes. I hope you really truly have. Um, I really hope you truly have blessed you over and abundantly with love, kindness, and joy. I really hope you have. I hope the most I truly have blessed you over and abundantly with kindness. I hope he has truly have. Um, my week has been an okay week. I really can't complain too much. Um, I, um, I really truly hope I really truly can't complain too much. Um I really truly can't. Um I went to Jamaica this week. Um you know, I went Monday through Friday, came back last night. And that's why I'm so late today, I'm tired, you know. Went to bed late last night. Um <clears throat> but what I learned in let me go ahead and get this out the way and then I go ahead and tell you what I learned. It says, And Ananias spake out these words, saying, I am Yahuwah, thy Ananias, we have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and thou shalt have no other Ananias before me, and thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down on this, 
thyself to them nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, thy Ananai, am a jealous Ananai, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and show mercy, unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahuwah, thy Ananai, in vain, for, you, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, six days shall thy labor. And do all thy works, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah thy Ananias. In it thou shalt not do any works, thou nor thy sons, nor thy daughter, thy man servants, nor thy maid servants, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahuwah made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, if Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, all thy fathers and thy mothers, that thy days be long upon the land which Yahuwah thy and I give thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbors. And thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his man servants, nor his maid servants, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Let us pray. O creators of the heavens and earth, of, of all radiance and vibrations, soften the grounds of our beings and carve out a space with us where your presence can abide. Fill us with your creativity so that we may be empowered to bear fruits of our mission. Let each of our actions bear fruits in accordance with our desires within your purpose for our life. Bestow us with the wisdom of grants. I mean, be stores with the wisdom of produce and share what each being needs to grow and flourish. Untie the tangled thread of destiny that binds us as we release others from the entanglement of the past mistakes. Do not let us be seduced by that which distracts us from our true purpose, but illuminate the opportunities of present moments. For you are the ground and the fruitful vision, the creator and power and fulfillment. As all is gathered and made whole once again. So let it be. So yes it is. Um, happy Sabbath day. Happy Sabbath day. This is the day that the Most High have made. So let us be glad and rejoice in it. To Facebook and YouTube. This is Breaking Strongholds Ministries. But yeah, what I learned last week, um, let me do this real fast. It says this in the book of Jubilees in chapter, chapter 9. Chapter 9, verses 28 and 29, 29 and 30. It says, this is the land which came forth Japheth. And his sons as a portion of his inheritance, which he should possess for himself and his sons for their generations forever. Five, five great islands and a great land in the north. But it is cold. The land of Ham is hot, which is the south. And the land of, the, of Shem is neither hot nor cold. But it is blended cold and heat, which is which is the US. Then we go to we go to verse we go to chapter ten, verse eighteen. Hold on, let me see some verse verse. Chapter 9, verse 14 and 15. So when the Most High divided the lands, he divided Noah, because it's also in Genesis chapter 10. Chapter 10. When you go to Genesis chapter 10, verse 5, this is what it says. By these were the eyes of the Gentiles divided into their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. So in verse five, cha verse five and chapter ten in Genesis, when the Most High he divided 
Sham, Ham, and Japhat, he divided them up so that they can have their own lands so that Ham won't be worried about going into Japhat, Japhat won't be worried about going into Ham, and Ham, Sham won't be worried about going into either one of the people's land because the Most High did not believe in integration. He believed in segregation. And he believed in segregation because he knew that each one of the, the offsprings had eight different personalities and he wanted to keep them separated. Okay, then that's for that's what's for Japhet. In number ten it says um when you go down to Ham, it's in Genesis chapter twenty. And it says, And these are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Okay, so the Most High really separated the people from the very beginning. He did not want them to be able to come together, even though they were speaking one tongue. They had one language, but... He wanted them to live into their own land, but when they decided to come together and start coming together as a whole, they came together as one to try to be gods, be Ananias, which they couldn't. So that's the reason why he came down there and confused them during the time of Nimrod. But also we got to understand that when the when the Most High separated the people, gave them their own lands, they made a covenant. Okay? In the book of Jubilees, chapter 9, verse 14, it says, And this the sons of Noah divided unto their sons in the presence of Noah their father. And he bound them all by an, an oath, imprecating a curse on everyone that sought to seize the portion which had not fallen to him by his lot. And they all said, so be it, so be it, for themselves and their sons forever. And throughout the generations to the day of judgment on which Yahuwah and Anasha judged them with a sword, with, with fire, with, for, with, for all the unclean wickedness of their error, wherewith they have filled the earth with transgressions and uncleanness, and fornication and sin. So, when the, when the angels came out here, and when they, when when Noah was land was when the whole earth was divided between Ham, Shem, and Japhat, they also made a covenant with Noah that they would not go into each other's lands. And if they did go into each other's land, that that nation. Who, who, who invaded someone else's territory will be cursed. Okay? So, they will be cursed. And now, when I look, when I was in Jamaica last week, <clears throat> what I saw was a lot of Indians and, and Indians over there in Jamaica. And what the Indian, what I saw that I really didn't like is that the Indian was used the the tourist guys who was native Jamaicans, the Indians would tell them, hey, you bring the people to my store and I will give you kickbacks so that if you help me get customers, I'll help you get some money in your pocket. But the tourist guy would not take us to the locals who are the Jamaicans they will not take us to them. They will only take us to the Indians so that we can prosper the Indians and not the Jamaicans themselves. And that's one thing I didn't like about <clears throat> that is because everybody, in, when I was talking to the people, they understood the scenario. They understood that they needed money, but they didn't understand how to monopolize the money. They didn't know how to control the money that they have. And mostly they was getting their money through tourism. So they the Indians was making money out of tourism. So but if the if the guys would only take the people 
to the Jamaican stores, the Jamaicans would come up. But because the tourist guy would only take the people to the Indian stores, the Indians would come up. And that's something I did not like um, about it. But on my on my trip, <clears throat> I read this book here. I read this book. And it's talking about <clears throat> globalization. It's talking about why rich countries are rich and why poor countries are poor. And <coughs> basically, the poor countries are poor because the rich countries put in policies that make sure that the poor countries could never become industrialized. But when the rich country was coming up, coming to be in existence and becoming powerful, that's how the rich country became powerful is because through industrialization. And that's something I didn't like. And it says, I'm going to say this. I'm going to read a little bit about this right here. It says, and Chang began university in Seoul in 1992, South Korea had become a middle income country thanks in large to its abilities to reverse engineer, to copy advanced industrial produce from the West, but the country still struggled to produce original products and to develop international patent, copyrights, and trademarks. The company struggled in these areas sparked chain interest in intellectual property rights which will remain a central concern of his academic careers. Okay, let me say something to you. What I learned is, it says to develop international patents, copyrights, and trademarks. The reason why the United States became so powerful is because they had developed international patents that they took from the slaves. They took everything that the slaves or blacks created. Because blacks couldn't patent a lot of things back in the days. If we could, we would be very powerful because everything generated off of us throughout the whole world. So, if we would have been able to patent and have copyrights and things of that nature and have trademarks, we would have been powerful. But we was in we was in bondage and captivity during that time period. And that's the same thing I see that's going over in Jamaica today. The people don't even have power to be able to run their own country the way they want to because they are still enslaved by Britain. And that is one of the sad things for me to see is that these people have a good heart, they're loving people, but they understand that they still are in captivity. Even though they're struggling, they understand some of the obstacles. They understand still that they are enslaved in their own countries and they can't even get out because of the simple fact is they got to have visas to go anywhere and if they decide to go somewhere, a work work um, passes. I forgot the name of it. But the United States won't let them come into the country because they're looking at their situation. They don't want they don't want dark skinned people here in the United States from other countries like Haiti and Jamaica, Africa. They only take a pair of a lighter skinned tone people here. But the Jamaicans understand what I got from that. Their our conversation is that they understand that they are held hostage in their own country. And that's something that I really disagree with even when I went to Dominican Republic you really can't get mad with the people on the islands because they are their potential to be prosperous is limited because of their being in captivity by the G7 nations when you go to Dominican, you go to Haiti, you go to Brazil, you go to Guyana, 
you go to all these countries, they still being oppressed by the G7 nations. And when you go over there, they have anguish to a certain extent because they know they have the capabilities of being doctors and lawyers and engineers and whatever else, football and basketball players. But these countries hold them down so that they can't be. So now I understand a little bit about the Jamaicans and I respect them a lot more. Now I understand the only, the only thing that they can hold on to is their land. When they say they're, they're Jamaicans and they're proud, I understand because that's all they can hold on to. You know, and I really enjoyed it. I met a lot of young people who have the enthusiasm to be successful. But, but because the United States and these European countries hold them down, they can't be as successful as they want to be. You know, here we are, here these people are saying that, man, I know I can be this, that, and the other. But they're held down to just being servants on reservations. Not reservations, but resorts. They know that they could be more than that. They just, but we're going to hold you down as a servant on a resort. And then when the people come into these resorts, they look down on the people. But they're just saying, Nick, I just don't have a chance to be what you have. But if I had a chance, I'd be better than you. That's why I understand why Jamaicans and Africans come over and get three or four jobs. Because they are trying to strive to be better. But go ahead and turn to Amos. The book of Amos. Chapter 4. When, they, when I hear them say one, no problem, man, no problem. No problem, man, no problem. I understand why now. I understand why. Do you know that the United States has the highest human trafficking around more than anybody else around the world? Over 400,000 of our kids get human traffic every year. Our people get human traffic every year. Just when the kids was, just when the people from, was coming from south of the border, 85,000 children was, was human trafficking. And nobody ever found them since then. Yeah. Nobody found them. 85,000. 85,000. Uh, Amos chapter 4, 6 through 13, and the key verse is verse 12. But I want us to have a, a broader view. And what I also learned is too is that when, when my wife and I, we was eating, right? My wife, she was kind of disappointed sometimes when she got the curry chicken and the curry goat, whatever. And she was like, ain't them a bones in it. Ain't them a bones in the curry chicken and the curry goat. But before you go to any country, I, I would suggest that you research their customs and their traditions. Because Jamaicans are not more keen on the meat. They're more keen on the bones and the food. So when we're going over there thinking we're getting a lot of, we're getting bones as if it's a bad thing. But to Jamaica, to uh, Americans, we want the meat, but Jamaicans don't want the bones. And the reason why they want the bones is because they got the nutrients in the bones. They live from a healthy perspective. And us Americans living from a glutton's perspective. We want the meat. But ain't no nutrients in the meat. The nutrients is in, is in the bone. That's why they was eating it. But it was such difficult for us to just. Because the simple fact is of our Western mentality. And going to a country that has a totally different mentality than us. Okay. Amos chapter 4 verse 12 it says. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, because I will do unto, unto, because I will do this unto thee. Prepare to meet thy Ananias, O Israel. Let me read it over. It says, Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do unto thee, 
prepare to meet Diana now, O Israel. If I may give a title of the text today, the title of the text today is Now is the time to repent. Now is the time to repent. To repent is a 13th century word. It means to be grieved over one's past and seek forgiveness. It says, feel, so, feel such regret for sin, crime, and omission as produced produces amendment of life. To feel pain, sorrow, or regret for something done or spoken. Basically, it means to feel pain, sorrow, or regret for something done or spoken. Okay, calamities. Calamities is a 15th century word. 15th century word that says any great misfortunes or cause of misery generally apply to events or disasters which produce excessive evil as loss of crops, earthquakes, configurations, def defeat, defeats of armies and the likes. Damage and state of adversities. I like the beginning of it. It says, calamities is any great misfortune or cause of misery. Generally, generally applied to events or disasters which produce extensive evil, loss of crops, earthquakes, and configurations. Okay, so when we're looking at the book of Amos, Amos is quote unquote is considered to be a minor prophet. I don't know what you mean. A minor prophet, I guess, is because of the small chapters in the book. And um he's they're not known like Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel. Uh they're not being known as those guys there, but they have a great import their word in prophecies or it's just as great as those others, but other people give them the position or label as saying minor prophet. But these are still prophets that give warnings to the people and to the children of Israel. And this is basically given a warning. Hosea, I mean, Amos was given a warning to the children of Israel because of what they have been doing in their time in their life and not actually paying attention but the most high was putting people in conditions like in Isaiah 45 and 7 something I do hold on to and I'm not gonna say it I'm gonna say this Isaiah 45 and 2 it says I formed the light created darkness I make peace and create evil I, Yahuwah, do all these things. And I think that's something we got to understand. I formed the light, created darkness. I make peace and created evil. I, make, I, Yahuwah, do all these things. So, if we understand that Yahuwah do all these things, whatever condition or state of mind that we have been in, we got to look at as if the Great Spirit, the Most High Spirit, put us in these conditions and we got to understand that got to understand that um, Most High did this for a reason and Most High is doing it for a particular reason and if we don't pay attention to it we can miss what Yahuwah is trying to do um 
Um, we will miss what Yahoo is trying to do. Because he's only here to wake us up and to keep us. It just that we have to pay attention to that. Whatever condition we're in now is for the most high is to wake us up so that we can be more aware and and turn to Yahuwah. Um so that we can turn back to Yahuwah. Um Everything happens for a reason. It's just that we have to pay attention to the reason. And if we don't pay attention to the reason, it's on us. Not on no one else. And if we're not paying attention to that, that's our fault. Because... Um... You know, that's just the way it is. If we're not looking at what the Most High is doing in our life, where we are right now, and sit down and say, okay, Most High, what are you doing? I understand where I am, but where you want me to be. Because if the Jamaicans would just support the Jamaicans and start going to the Chinese restaurants, the Indian stores, the Jamaicans can come up because they control their money. That's the same way it is here in the, in the States. If we stop patronizing other people, not because we hate them, but because we're trying to bring our own people up, we will be more successful. But because we don't patronize our own people, our people can't come up. But we're helping other people come up that don't really need our help. And that's not being racist. That's not having prejudices. You got to have self-love, which is the one love. You got to love your, yourself first before you can love anybody else. So, you know, we're talking about conditions. We're talking about situations. We're talking about... Um, we're talking about that in the day and the most high trying to get our attention. It just said, um, it's, it's, are we actually looking at what he's doing? Are we actually looking at what he's doing? Are we actually trying to change our life around? Are we actually trying to make it better? That's what I'm asking you. Do we have the right glasses on to make us want to repent? Okay? So let us go ahead and go to Amos chapter six, chapter 4 verse 6. Amos chapter 4 verse 6. Um, because he's basically, this is right before the time of the Babylonian, the Babylonian captivity. This is right before that. Um... It was right before the destruct, right before the fall, and this was just a warning. And I want us <coughs> to look at everything that's been going on in the last week with the they saying the immigrants are taking over places. I understand that the invasion is here. They just waiting on a phone call. So. Amos chapter 4 verse 6, it reads, I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and want of bread in all your places. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith you all. We're talking about repentance. We're talking about calamities. We're also talking about conditions. Condition is a state or a particular mode of being applied to eternal, external circumstances, to the body, to the mind, and to things. We're talking about conditions. 
what would actually want to make you change your frame of thinking and change your behavior and your lifestyle if it's not your physical and your mental conditions. If you're living in a state of destitute right now and you know that you've been in your state of destitute, your mindset got you in this state of destitute, why wouldn't you want to change your mindset? If you know that eating and drinking and being gluttonous and all these things have made you become overweight, why wouldn't you want to change your mindset and to be more disciplined in what you eat and you drink? Like I said, repentance is to just recognize that you have done something wrong, admitting that you have done something or said something wrong, and it makes you feel a certain kind of way about it. That's what repent means. And then repentance is the actions of going back to the beginning, being pure, natural, whole. So, understand this again. We're talking about a physical, we're talking about the condition as a whole. Your conditions as a whole. Your calamities as your problems as a whole. It should want you to want to repent of whatever you have done wrong and make you do better. Okay? It says conditions is state or a particular mode of being applied to external circumstances, to the body, to the mind, and to the things. To things. Let me read verse 6 over again. It says, I also have given you cleanness of teeth in your, in your cities. Cleanness of teeth means famines. In all your cities, and with wants of bread and poverty of bread in all your places, yet ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. And the Most High said, What I gotta do to you to make you come back to me? Look at your living conditions, your state of mind, look at everything that you're going through in life. What I got to do more to get you to come back to me? And see, one of the things that I've learned over there, Jamaica said, we need money. They have the most churches per capita than anybody else in the whole world, but they also got the most pubs or bars per capita than anyone in the world. So this small island, this island has the most churches and the most corner liquor stores or bars per capita than anyone else in the world. And they're looking at their situation and saying, the most I was looking, put them in this situation and saying, what else could I do to you to get you to turn back to me? Look at your destitute state and conditions. Why else would you not want to turn back to me? Leave your wicked ways. I have put you in these conditions for a a for a for specific reason. Why else would you not want to turn back to me if you know that there is a creator in the heavens and earth? And not just the Jamaicans, the, the Guyanians, the, all the people of color, if we know that we're in this destitute state, why wouldn't we want to turn back to Yahoo? If we continue to have death in the family, if we continue to have problems everywhere, we're not getting what we desire to have, that means that our conditions we are doing something to keep us in this state or in this condition. And it means that we need to do something to get out of this condition. What we have been doing for a long period of time seems like it's not working. That means that we might need to be trying to do something different. It's not working. 
Let us go to Deuteronomy chapter. Let us go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 38. Because you can't keep beating your head up against the wall and think that things are going to change. Or you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and think that you're going to have a different result. At some point, we got to turn, we got to acknowledge and sit down and analyze our situation and say, okay, now, this is what we've been doing for, this is what I've been doing for a long period of time. Where has it gotten me? I still don't have no money in the bank. Still ain't got no car. Still ain't got the job that I need. My relationships with my family and friends are not where I want it to be. Now, what do I got to do to make these situations better? That's what we have to sit down and do. We got to sit down and analyze the situation. Deuteronomy 28, 38, it says, Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shalt gather but in little in, for the locust shall consume it. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but thou shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. And see, everybody is coming in raping Jamaica. Even Jamaicans are the most, they have the majority of people in the island. Everybody over there is coming in raping Jamaica. The United States, the Chinese, the Indians, uh -huh. the UK. All these people are coming in raping Jamaica. They're taking their resources. All these people over there are taking their resources. And just leaving them to eat the, 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 the dirt, the, the, the most wickedest things on the earth. Not the wickedest thing, but they're making Jamaicans live a poor standard of life as if the island don't produce anything. But in actuality, the island produce a lot of things, but the Jamaicans... Got to turn from their ways, just like all of us have to turn from our ways. We're no better than the Jamaicans. The Guyanans are no better than us. No, we're not better than the Guyanans. Haitians are no, we're no better than the Haitians. We're all in the same state. Black Americans and African American people here are from here. But we are the same. We're getting treated the same. Look at all the inventions and land patents that we had, and all the inventions that we made. We cannot, we cannot as a people utilize those patents because they were stolen from us. So that means that something we have been doing got us in a desolate state. So it means that, so, oh, hold on, let me reframe my thinking. Let me change my mindset. Let us go to uh, 1 Kings 17. Because we got to look at where we are in life and see if we're happy or sad about it. Look at where we are as a people. And this could be from the, to the Gentiles or Europeans. Look at your state of being. Because... The Europeans are more mental medication than anybody in the world. For antidepressants, all this type of medication, Europeans are on those medications. Anxiety medicines, all this stuff. They're not going without being punished as well. And you have to, if you're listening to me, you have to look at your situation and say, where am I at? Why am I in the situation I'm in? What do I need to do to change my, my, my conditions? 1 Kings 17 and 1 it says that Elijah the Tidbite, who was the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, 
As Yahuwah and Anah Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the words of Yahuwah came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook that is before Jordan. So, it hasn't been rain. It rained periodically. Like in the last three months in Georgia, it might have rained maybe 10 or 15 times out of that three or four months. It didn't do a lot of rain in this summer. That's why the crops didn't grow. That's why things wasn't the way it's supposed to be in. My, car, my garden did horribly this year. It didn't do a lot of raining because if I do put the the the, um, the city water on I'm putting chlorine on my vegetables and it don't do the same. So I needed more sun rain water than city water. Cause the city water got so much chlorine and it uh, it don't make my vegetables produce the way natural rain water would produce. Ezekiel sixteen. And 27. We're going to go to verse 26 and 27. Because we got to look at our conditions right now, today. Let's truly examine them. And ask ourselves, am I in a bad state or am I in a good state? Is my health okay? My finances okay? Hold on, let me rephrase that. Is my relationship with the Most High good? Am I studying His Word the way I need to? Am I fine? Is my relationship with my husband and my kids good? Is my finances good? Is my health good? Am I good internally? We got to ask ourselves these questions. And when we ask ourselves those questions, when we ask ourselves those questions, then we can see what kind of condition that we're in. I'm going to give you those five again. The, first, the five we need to mainly focus on is the relationship with the Most High, making sure that our health is good, our mental and physical health is good. Then once we make sure our mental and physical health is good, then we got to make sure that our relationship with our internal and external families are good. Then we got to make sure that our occupation is something that is fulfilling to us. Then once we make sure that we got the right occupation, then we be concerned about the money, the finances. If we can sit down and analyze that and say, hey, all those areas are okay, I'm good, we don't have to repent. But if we have an issues within these areas, we need to do some strong examinations. Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 26 and 27 and it reads, And thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbor, greater flesh, and has increased thy whoredom to provoke me to anger. Behold, therefore, I have stretched out my hands over thee, and have diminished thy ordinary foods and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee. Listen to that again. Listen to that again. Ezekiel 16 and 26. 
Listen to that again. Because of our actions put us in a certain condition. Physical and mental condition. Okay. Listen to this again. It says, Behold, therefore I have stretched out my hands over thee. This is the most high is doing now, okay? Whatever condition and whatever situation you are or we are in is because of what the most high have done to us. Because of what we have done. Whatever we did, the most high is just bringing judgment on us because of what we did. Okay, whatever state that we're in, we got to do a self-examination of ourselves. It says, Behold, therefore, if I would stretch out my hand over thee, and have dominion, and have diminished thy ordinary foods, and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee, the daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed, of thy lewd, lewd ways. The word lewd is. It means. The word lewd means to. Uh, hold on. It means to. It's a. Um, it means wicked ways. Erroneous ways. Wicked ways, which are ashamed of thy wicked ways. So, if you look at all people of color on the earth, we have did some things that we shouldn't have never done to put us in the condition that we're in. Let, let me ask you this. In, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4 and 5. Listen to this. And Yahshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Have we been have have we been doing wrong because we allowed man? To lead and guide us into the wrong way. Because the appetite that he put in front of our eyes. Or what he tempted us with. Then it says. For many shall come in my name. Saying I am Christ. And shall deceive many. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of war. And see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. But verse 4 and 5, the reason, are we in the condition that we're in because we allow man to deceive us, to put us in the conditions that we're in? He tempted us to do some things that we know we should not be doing. Because for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. That is the religion sector. Uh, we are in the, the destitute state that we're in now because we're still following after man and not after the spirit of the Most High. Because all religions are man-made. All religions are man-made. Constantine established the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church religion. And what triggered down from the Roman Catholic Church is all denominational churches from that point forward. The beginning was the Lutheran Church with the 95 Theses being stamped on the Catholic door, Catholic Church door. And if you go look at the movie Robin Hood with Jamie Foxx in it, it lets you know that the church, when they was first being established, they was pimping the people for the money. 
when they was talking about purgatory and all of these things, they was pimping the people for the money. They was selling them soft. They were selling them lies from the very beginning. Go look at the movie Robin Hood with Jamie Foxx in it and really sit down and analyze that movie. That's what I did when I was in Jamaica. I was looking at a little bit of it. And the most I was taking the fish scales out of my eye because Robin Hood about robbing the rich and giving to the poor. But that's what the church been doing, robbing the poor and giving it to the rich. Like a video I saw, another thing on, on Facebook this morning I saw, we'll be glad to give the preacher 10% of our money who got on a $1,000 suit and a $500 pair of shoes, but you see a bomb on the street, you won't give them nothing. Because they have manipulated us. Man, that take heed that no man deceive you, cause man have been deceiving her for a long period of time. Is this the reason why we're in a desolate state? Because we have allowed man to pimp us and not sit down and read the word for ourselves. Cause he said, "For many shall come in my name, saying I'm Christ." Christ means anointed one. Anointed one just means a gift, a spiritual or divine gift. Let's go back to Amos. I'm going to go back to Amos chapter 4 verse 7. Because we got to sit down and look at ourselves and say, hey man, where am I at? Where am I at? And also, have I withheld holding the rain from you? When there were yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon the one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rain upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not wither. I was just telling you that in Georgia it didn't rain a lot this year. Maybe ten times in three, four months, three months. Verse eight. So two or three cities wandered unto one to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, said Yahuwah. He's saying that you can see your condition. You can see your state of being. And you know that they're desolate. You, they, you know. But you still haven't returned unto me. You're still waddling in the mud. You still haven't returned to me. Even though you need, you see your situation is the way it is. But you still are so stiff-necked. Such a stiff-necked people. Exodus 32 and 9. Two and eight and nine. It says they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, "These be thy Ananias, I thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt." And Yahuwah said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot 
against them and that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation. See, we don't realize that we put ourselves in the conditions that we are in. Don't nobody else do it to us but us. We put us in the conditions that we're in because of our mindset and our behavior. Not because of anything else, but because of our mindset. He said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. See, and that's the thing. We think the physical things are the ones is the is is the things that give us satisfaction. We think the cars, the clothes, the houses, the money give us internal satisfaction when it's when it's, it's vanity. The relationship with you who will give us more facts, satisfaction and contentment than anything else. But we think it's the money, clothes, houses, the job, the title. But that is vanity. But you having a divine connection to the universe, which is the most high, it gives you that happiness that no man could ever satisfy. Let's go back to Amos 4 and 9. It says, two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith Yahuwah. We cannot think that the physical, tangible things of this world satisfies the spiritual soul. We can't. Two different things. Nothing can satisfy the physical flesh because it's always something else out here tempting it for something else. It says, I have smitten you with blistering and mildew, blastering and mildew, when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increase. The palmer wood, the palmer worms devoured them, yet have you not returned unto me, saith Yahuwah. He said, you got all this stuff, and I allow other things. Like we had our peace tree this year. We had a peace tree that was full of trees. Full of peaches. Full of peaches. We had a tree full of peaches this year. Broke. <laughs> but the Japanese be the Japanese beetles, right? And the squirrels. And the squirrels came in and ate a majority of our peaches. So it's letting us know right there. Yes, you had a big old tree, peaches tree full of peaches, but the palm of wool, the, the Japanese beetles and the and the squirrels gonna eat them all up. You ain't going to be able to enjoy as much as you want to enjoy them. I'm going to give you some. We made seven jars of jam, but I'm not going to give you what you want. Verse 10. It says, I sent among you the pestilence after the man of the Egypt. Of the, the pestilence. What's pestilence mean? I mean sickness and plagues. Let me rephrase that. I have sent among you the plagues after the manner of Egypt. Your men, your young men have I slain with the sword. This rapper just died a couple of days ago. A rapper from Atlanta just died, got killed the other day. Our young men are continuing to die in the streets. This young rapper just died. The plague, the matter of Egypt is your young men have I slain with the sword and have taken away your horses 
And I have made the abominations of your camps to come up unto, unto your nostrils. Yet have you returned unto me, said the whore. He said, yo, young men are dying in the streets. They're going to jail. They're turning from natural to unnatural. They're doing all these wicked things, but yet have you returned unto me. He said, your horses have I taken away. You still haven't returned unto me. And I have made your stink, your abomination of your people to come up unto me, to your nostrils. He said, you have seen the abomination of your people. It's sadness sometimes. What you see around in our community these days. And he said, but yet you haven't come back to me. He said, what else I got to do to get you to come back? You're not going to even come back to me when your young men and women are dying in the street, going to jail. Your horse is dying. Your community look like Sodom and Gomorrah. But you still don't choose to come back to me. Let's go to Exodus 9. 3 through 6. It says, Behold, the hand of Yahuwah is upon thy cattle, which is in the field. Upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the cattle, a camel, upon the oxen, upon the sheep, there shall be a very egregious moraine. Moraine. Yahuwah shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is the children of Israel. And Yahuwah appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow Yahuwah shall do this thing in the land. Okay, let us go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, 68, 28 and 60. What gonna make us turn from our ways? What do what else do Yahuwah have to do to make us turn from our way? Even when we seeing that the immigrants are taking over apartment complex. What else is it going to do to make us turn our way? Deuteronomy 28.6 says, Moreover, he will... 60 or 60? 60. 28 and 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. We are, have, we are having people to die on a daily basis. Faces in large numbers, and nobody still says, I need to turn to the Mohawk. I hear people saying, Man, I need to go get a detox. Man, I need to get, do this. I need to go eat shop. None of these people say, I need to turn to the Mohawk. Psalms. He don't, he don't gave us diseases and plagues. You don't put our children in jail and got them shooting and killing on the street. I do not hear people saying we need to go, we need to turn to the most high. Psalm 78, 48 through 50. He gave up their cattle. Also to the hell, to the hell, and their flocks to the to to hot um, um, thunderbolt. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble, by sending evil angels against them. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their souls from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence. And smote all the firstborns in Egypt and the chief of their strength in the tabernacle of Ham. What is it going to take for us to turn from our wicked way? Looking at the conditions that we're in today, what is it going to do? 
What is it going to take? What is it going to take? Amos. He'll put diseases on us. He'll put our young men and young women to go to jail or be put in jail or die in the streets. He'll made us become impoverished in so many areas. We saw that, but then we just look at our state of the conditions of our community. What is is it going to take for us to turn from our wicked ways and turn to the Mohammed? Amos chapter 6, verse 11. Because all the islands, everywhere where black people are, are in desolate states. Look at the continent of Africa. Most countries in Africa are being controlled by European nations. Look at most island country islands. Most of them are being controlled by European nations. Look at the U.S. controlled by Europeans. What does it? What is it going to take for people of color to turn back to the Mohai? Looking at the state that we have been in for a long period of time, even in China, even in India, even in even in Japan, what is it going to do to turn, make us change, turn from our wicked way? What are the kind of conditions that we're going to need to be in? And it says, I have overthrown some of you. I have overthrown some of you. As as Anani overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you and and ye were as a fire firebrand plucked out of the burning, yet have you not returned unto me? Said the whore. He said, "I don't put you, I don't drop you down low. I will make you to your lowest point of the lowest point, and you still have not returned unto me." What is it going to take? You see the calamities on the earth. You still haven't repented. You see your conditions today. You still haven't repented. Your relationships are in shambles. Your health is bad. You don't have a lot of money in the bank and you're definitely not doing nothing. You're not working in a field that you really desire to work in. What else I got to do to you to make you turn back to me? That's what he's saying. Verse 12. Therefore, if this will I do unto thee, O, o Israel. And because I will do this unto you, prepare to meet thy Anani, O Israel. He said, because I don't did all this stuff and you still stiff neck. Get ready to meet me. Because it, you're not listening. Let's go to Isaiah 47. And 3. It says, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will meet, and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, Yahuwah of hosts is his name, the Holy One. Let us go to James, and I'm going to read something else. Let us go to James, chapter 4, verse 1 through 10. See, we got to do some true examination of our life. And see, when I went scuba diving, I mean snorkeling in Jamaica, right? Mm -hmm. The most I was showing me that there's so much stuff out here I could give you and do for you 
if you just give your life up to me. But because you are afraid to give your life up to me, or you're not willing to give your life up to me, I can't give you all the desires of your heart. You're going to continue to walk around in jail, in bondage. In James 4, 1 through 10, it says, From hence, from whence, come wars and fighting among you. Come they not hence, even of your lust that wars in your members. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and wars. And yet, it's, ye, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Listen to that again. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss. The word amiss means this. He said you're asking for the wrong reason. It's a badly physical and moral. It's a disease. It's evil. It's grievously. It's miserable. It's sick. It's sores. He said you're asking for the wrong intentions. Ye ask and receive not, because you ask in badly ways, for badly intent, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Listen to that. That ye may consume it upon your lust, ye adulterers and adulteress. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is an enemy with an eye. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy at war with Ananias. Do you think that the scriptures say in vain the spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy? But he gives more grace. Wherefore he said, Ananias resist the proud but give grace unto the humble. Listen to that again. But he give, give more grace, more mercy, a more happiness. Wherefore if he said. And I resist the proud. The high minded. The arrogance. But give grace. Happiness. Unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to and I resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw nigh to and And he will draw nigh to you. What did he say? Draw nigh to Ananias, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your heart, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn. Weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and let your joy be heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of Yahuwah, and he shall lift you up. What does that say? Humble yourself in the sight of Yahuwah, and he shall lift you up. read you a little bit out of the Apocalypse of Zephaniah. It's in chapter 4. It says, Then I walked with the angels of Yahuwah, and I looked before and I looked before me and I saw a place there. Thousands of thousands of minor my, my, thousands and thousands of angels entered through it. Their faces were like a leopard their tusk being outside their mouth like the wild boars. Their eyes was mixed with blood. Their hairs was loose like the hairs of women. Their, their fiery scrounges were in their hands. And when I saw them, I was afraid. And I said to that angel who walked with me, Oh, what sort are these? And he said to me, These are the servants of all creation who come to 
to the soul of the ungodly men to bring them and leave them in this place. They spent three days going around with them in their air before they bring, they bring them and cast them in turn, into turn, internal into in, into their internal punishments. I said, I beseech you, O you who don't give them authority to come to me. The angel said, I don't. He said, the angel said, don't fear. I will I will not permit them to come to you because you are pure before you who. Listen to that again. He asked the question. He said, they spend three days going around with them in the air before they bring them and cast them into their eternal punishment. I said, I beseech you, O Yahuwah, don't give them authority to come to me. The angel said, don't fear, I will not permit them to come to you because you are pure before Yahuwah. I will not permit them to come to you because Yahuwah Almighty sent me to you because you are pure before him. Then he beckoned to them and they would draw themselves and they ran from me. He wasn't tempted or whatever the situation might have been because he was pure at heart with Yahuwah. See, you, we are the only ones that can stop. We are the only ones that can. We are the only ones hurt our, our help our situation. We are the only ones that can help or hurt our situation. Because everything depends on us. It says in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, If my people are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Everything starts with us. It all starts with Yahuwah. Whatever you're going through in your life, that's why I said earlier, you gotta look at you gotta look at your relationship with Yahuwah. You gotta look at your relationship. You gotta see how your health is with you. You gotta look at your relationships that's around you. You got to look at your op your job opportunities that you're with. You got to look at your monies and see how it's going. Everything starts with us first before it can go outside and do anything else. Because he said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and seek, and, and humble themselves, first we got to be humble. Understanding that we are just vessels or instruments or tools for the most high to be used. Then once we humble ourselves, we got to do consistency in praying. Mm -hmm. We truly got to be praying because we are praying to the most high for him to guide and lead and guide us, protect us and give us the strength to continue to walk. But we got to walk in our abilities that he's already have given us. Then it says, and seek my face. Mean go after him, doing his will and his purpose. And turn from their wicked ways. That is repentance. Your actions got to be different than what they was a long time ago. You can't do the same thing but expect different results. You can't be selfish or arrogant or proud and think that you're going to get what you you think you deserve. That don't work like that. Only thing you're doing is pushing people away from you. And making the most high bring judgment upon you. And bringing you low. And then he said after you do all those things. Once you humble yourself. Once you pray. Once you seek his face. And turn from your wicked way. Then. I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins 
and we'll hear the land. See, stuff starts with us first. It don't start with nobody else. It starts with us. Nobody else. So the title of the text today is now is the time to repent because we see calamities on the on the rise. We see the calamities in the community. We see the calamities in our own relationships, with our monies, with our jobs, with our health. And furthermore, we see that we don't have a great relationship with the Most High. The point today is we got to look at our physical condition. Our body's condition, the physical body condition, because judgment is here. We got to look at all of that. If we want to truly have a whole life. So, Father, as we come to you today, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we give you all the honor and the glory. Father, we thank you for everything you have done and what you continue to do. Father, we just thank that we just ask that you continue to give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Let us continue to walk in your word, but have a repentance heart. And ask you to forgive us for the sins that we have committed, knowingly and unknowingly. Father, we ask that you bless the people on the land who's trying to do your will. But continue to judge those wicked ones. We ask that you protect us and lead us and guide us for the next week. But we just ask that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And all these things we pray in your higher name. So let it be. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Y'all have a blessed one. Shaking all the dirt out of this grave, y'all be special. Get us in the wilderness. 